Hi, Lou Pulsifer here to talk about gameplay depth, other kinds of depth, and variety in games. This is a difficult topic because everyone seems to mean something different when they say depth. And in fact, it seems there are several kinds of depth. My main focus here is on gameplay depth, but we'll talk about breadth, variety, and about other kinds of depth in games. Gameplay depth is a matter of making good choices under several circumstances. One, when there are several plausible choices. Two, only some of them are viable that is likely to lead to success. So it, a choice can look good, but it turns out not to be, and you realize after perhaps having played that you're not going to make that choice. Which viable choice is best in the circumstances depends on those circumstances and depends on what other players do. There is no always correct solution. And which choice you settle on makes a difference in whether you succeed. Moreover, in deep games, choices tend to lead to other decisions that you may not have been aware of beforehand. You may not have even known they were there. And that's where the term depth really comes from. You keep working your way down in the game and finding new things. Does it mean a large number of decisions? Absolutely not. Gameplay depth does not come from the number of decisions, but from the quality of the choices and their importance to the outcome of the game. If there are too many decisions, ultimately no individual decision really matters. Or, if some of the decisions matter much more than others, why are the trivial ones still in the game? If they're trivial, they shouldn't be in the game. And that reduces the number of decisions. Now, what if you can't lose? Think about that. In these definitions, if you can't lose, then what you decide doesn't really matter, except in a minor way. And that's the case with many video games. You can go back to your save and try again and try again and try again and try again until you get a result that you like. Even in roguelikes, which are supposedly permadeath, you can get out of the game, copy the save file, then go back, and if you die, you can get out of the game, copy the save file back, and so on. Lack of losing is in the nature of video games, single-player video games. It's also in the nature of puzzles. In fact, most single-player games amount to puzzles more than games. Now, yes, you can give up before you solve a puzzle, but puzzles are more a matter of persistence than making wrong decisions, because you can try, try again. Now, my term uh, transparency refers to a game where it's easy to see what the right decisions are, so that someone who's played once or maybe twice can know most of what he or she needs to know to be a really good player in that game. This contrasts with a deep game. Deep games are not generally transparent. If you play a deep game a few times or for a few hours, you don't yet have a really outstanding handle on how to win or succeed. You just haven't seen enough of it. You haven't been able to think about it enough. Contrast this with how most games, especially tabletop games these days, are designed so that you do have a good handle after one play. That avoids frustration and avoids work for the players but it often results in a game that's only played once or twice or three times. And then it's exhausted. There's nothing there, nothing left. And gameplay adept decisions have to be ones that don't have always correct solutions. You expect a deep game to put the players on the horns of a dilemma where they want to do various things and they can't do them all, and they have to decide which is the best thing to do. And you expect in a deep game that these decisions will not have always correct solutions. 
Now, there are some games where that's not true. A resource management game can put you on the horns of a dilemma. There's always more than you want to do that you want to do than you have resources for, but the consequence is quite different compared to a war game. And also, often there's an optimal solution, a best choice that will always be best in that situation. In a war game, if you make the wrong decision, it can result in you losing territory, having a ship sunk, having an army destroyed, and so forth. In a resource management game, making the wrong decision results in less than optimal progress. In resource management, you're looking for optimal moves, and there's usually a solution. And in war games, especially multi-sided games, more than two sides, there's usually not an always correct solution. Now, I've been talking about gameplay depth, but there are other kinds of things that people call deep. Puzzle depth, model depth, even story depth. But these kinds of depth are not about gameplay decisions. They're about other aspects of the game. Well, puzzle depth is about decisions, but it's in a never-changing, ultimately predictable environment where once you've found the right decision, it's always the right decision. So depth in puzzle terms is in the sense of a long sequence of choices leading to ultimate success, where you have to make the right choice. Keep in mind, puzzles have always correct solutions, so there are always correct choices. Beyond formal puzzles, we have games that are solvable, such as tic-tac-toe, which is really easy to solve, checkers, which has been brute force solved by computer and nearly solved by Marion Tinsley when he was alive, and then chess, which is probably too difficult for any human to ever solve, but probably computers will ultimately. A single player game, whether it's a video game or uh, something like Pandemic, which is essentially a single player game, even though there are several players, may not involve random elements. And so when you solve it, you beat the game. If it does involve random elements like Pandemic, then you learn how to beat the game and beat it consistently, and then you play a more difficult version. Any game that you can speed run in a few minutes is essentially a puzzle with always correct solutions. Even if there are some random elements, if there weren't always correct solutions, how could you run through in five or ten minutes a game that originally takes five hours or ten hours? Good games in the old-fashioned sense of game don't have always correct solutions. A dominant strategy is bad, not good, in a game. Story depth refers to lots of branches to the story, lots of choices that make or break the participants. You have old games like uh, old Final Fantasy where there's lots of story, but the gameplay doesn't have much to do with the story. It's just repetitive and shallow. So depth here is related more to intricacy rather than to right choices. Because face it, in many if not most great stories, the protagonist is very lucky in his choices and what happens that he cannot control. Think of any great adventure and go back and look at it and you'll say, man, that dude was really lucky. More in part two.